Hey, welcome back to the channel. So it has happened. The strike is now happening. Um, we're going to go over what that could possibly mean for us and why the White House did not act on this. So happy October 1st. <laughs> Happy October 1st. Today is my mom's birthday. Happy strike day. So let's get into it. Please hit the like button as you enter. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So dock workers at ports from Maine to Texas are officially on strike after the clock struck midnight with no new labor deal in hand. 36 East and Gulf Coast ports shut down as 45,000 union workers walked off the job after labor negotiations stalled between the International Longshoremen's Association, ILA, and the United States Maritime Alliance. The strike only um, exacerbates uh, some temporary port closures in places like Florida, the Carolinas, and Georgia in the wake of Hurricane Helene. The ILA strike is the first at these ports since 1977. That's 50 years, 50 whole years, and now we're in a strike. And did I mention it's election year? And it has the potential to cost the economy up to $5 billion a day with a B, up in holiday shopping for millions of Americans and dictate whether many small and medium-sized businesses and farmers turn a profit or lose money this year, basically shutting them down. Uh, every idle day that a ship does not get into the port costs money and sometimes a lot of money. That ultimately gets passed on to consumers, i.e. inflation. Now that the strike is on, experts will turn their focus to how long the strike may last. Each day of the strike could cost the economy up to $5 billion a day as imports and exports are blocked. And that's an estimate. It's not just about the shutdown, but also about the recovery period and how long it takes to get things back up and running, says the vice president of supply chain and customs policy. For each day of the strike, it takes about three to five days to clear the backlog and resume normal operations. The longer it goes, the more it gets compounded. That is going to create a container crunch, you guys. And I have a video about container crunch. If you don't know what that is, just type that in and put Tommy Vice <clears throat> and it should come up. A port strike in 2002 went for 11 days um, before the Bush administration invoked the Taft-Hartley Act to force the ports to reopen. The act allows... The act allows the federal government to seek a court injunction against a strike to allow both parties to continue negotiations during an 80 day cooling off period. It took six months to recover from those 11 days that they were on strike. So y'all get prepared if you're not. Despite many industry groups calling for intervention, the Biden administration said it doesn't intend to invoke the Taft-Hartley. Instead, it encouraged continued negotiations and said in a statement that it would carefully monitor supply chain disruptions and respond swiftly to help minimize potential disruptions in the event of a prolonged strike by engaging, uh, by engaging the poor state and local officials, industry, labor, ocean carriers, rail, and trucking companies. It's happening, y'all. I told y'all that I was hoping that it wouldn't, but I knew that they weren't going to get what they were asking for. And if you wonder what they were asking for, they were asking for pay raise. They're asking not to be replaced by AI, basically. Um, and you can look back at any of my videos. I've been talking about it every single day no matter what story i throw that in there because this is this is a serious situation right here with about half of the u.s ocean imports passing through the east and gulf coast ports a wide range of products are affected including produce produce cars 
auto and machinery parts, clothing, pharmaceuticals, y'all get your medicines, wine, and other spirits, holiday goods like toys and seafood, experts say. Any strike that lasts more than one week could cause goods shortages for the holidays. Retailers are running lean currently, so inventory would get drawn down and prices of shipping and good prices would go vertical for a period of time. That means we're going to get hit with that. We're going to get hit with that price. We could get the kind of inflation for six months similar to or worse than peak inflation levels a year ago that they claim we weren't in. Small and medium-sized businesses could suffer most, some said. Large businesses with dedicated procurement departments and considerable access to capital have been preparing for this strike. I told y'all the past few days. These major stores have been stockpiling goods because they knew that this would come. But a lot of those stores, especially in the heavy hit areas of Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, are already depleting a lot of their goods due to the hurricane. So expect the prices to go up. They've been preparing for the strike for some time and many have ordered excess materials, which they were able to finance with lower cost debt. The only thing with them ordering more, not everything has made it in, you guys. If it wasn't already on the back of the truck before 12 a.m. today, then that business is not getting those goods. Small businesses, however, are less likely to have been able to order early and in bulk and are less likely to obtain the capital required to order larger quantities of supplies in advance. And we're already seeing in South Carolina and North Carolina and probably Florida, we're already seeing shelves being depleted. When they run out, they run out and you're going to see empty shelves again. Businesses that sell products to international markets would suffer. For example, agricultural experts or uh, exporters of soybean and poultry won't be able to send their goods overseas and could end up losing market share or worse, lose money because their goods are perishable. Companies keeping lean inventories to keep costs low might have to shut down assembly lines amid a prolonged strike. This could come at a time when the job market is already cooling. They say the job market is cooling. I don't say the job market is cooling. I say um, they have taken things off to make it look like there are lots of jobs out there. Let me go back up to uh, this right here. This is going to cut off vital trade arteries just weeks ahead of the nation's presidential election. Let me see. Today is October 1st. Thirty. Yep. Thirty-four days before election. This strike could hit 36 ports that handle about one half of U.S. ocean imports. That could affect availability of a range of goods from bananas, I told y'all about that, 
to clothing to cars shipped via container while creating week-long backlog at the ports. It could also stoke shipping cost increases that may be passed on to voters already frustrated with housing and food inflation. The International Longshoremen's Association Union representing workers at ports from Maine to Texas and the United States Maritime Alliance employer group appear to have hit an impasse over the pay. The current six-year contract expires at midnight on September 30th, and this is why we are in the strike right now. There hasn't been a strike again since 1977, 50 years ago. The White House said that is not trying to help broker a deal. And the question is why? <laughs> so longshoremen, what they do is they operate cranes that plug containers from ships to lashing, securing cargo containers to prevent them from falling off during transit and process paperwork. Um, they're also called stevedores. They handle cargo from incoming ships. They mostly work on container ships, but also do some work with car carriers and cruise ships. Ports handled 38 billion in vehicle imports last year. Auto parts are also a key import. So there's going to be shortage there as well. The ports also um, led the U.S. in shipments of machinery, fabricated steel, and precision instruments, coming in at 97.4 billion, 16.2 billion, 15.7 billion. Agriculture exports imports at risk in this port strike. 14% of all U.S. waterborne agricultural exports by volume would be at risk from this strike over one week period, the potential value of those exports is estimated at $318 million. 53% of U.S. waterborne ag agricultural imports by volume are vulnerable to the strike, leading, a, leading to a potential economic impact of over $1.1 billion per week, says the Farm Bureau. Three quarters of the nation's banana imports from countries like Guatemala and Ecuador land at ports on the East and Gulf Coast. Separately, the U.S. imports coffee, cocoa in large volumes and exports cotton. And I showed you that one store in that video where coffee is already starting to dwindle. A strike also would affect container exports of soybeans, soybean meal, and other products, and would have a significant impact on chilled or frozen meat and eggs. And you see the price of eggs going up and disappearing in the store as well. The $18 billion a year U.S. beef and pork export market and the 5.8 billion poultry and egg export sector relies on refrigerated containers that cannot sit idle for long. Everything I'm saying to you, all I'm hearing in my head is cha-ching because it's going to cost more. That pack of chicken that may cost $5 for some legs or $6 for some legs may cost you 10, may cost you $15. About 45% of all waterborne U.S. pork exports and 30% of beef exports were shipped via East Coast and Gulf Coast ports in the, seven, in the first seven months of this year. 
and this is according to the U.S. Meat Export Federation, more than a quarter of all U.S. eggs and egg product exports and around 70% of all poultry meat exports are shipped from ports along the East and Gulf Coast. And that's according to customs data and the USA Poultry and Egg Export Council. The affected ports also handled more than 91% of containerized imports and 69% of containerized exports of U.S. pharmaceutical products. This is not good at all. More than one-third of containers departing the U.S. with life-saving medications leaves from the port of Norfolk, Virginia, while nearly one third of containerized pharmaceutical imports enter the country through the port of Charleston, South Carolina. Retailers are rushing shipments of holiday goods, but y'all, like I said, not everything made it through. Retailers account for roughly half of all container volumes. Many US retailers also have rushed in shipments of year-end holiday goods. The ports that would be affected by a potential strike bring, well, not potential, it's already happening. The port that is affected by the potential strike that's happening now bring over half of the nation's knitted and non-knitted apparel valued at $32.8 billion combined as well furniture valued at $23.4 billion. And that's according to S&P Global Market Intelligence. Though the Gulf Coast ports of Houston and New Orleans are major oil and gas shipment hubs, those commodities would remain largely unaffected by a strike involving more labor intensive container cargo. The same applies to coal exports from Norfolk, Virginia, the ILA, however, has pledged to handle military cargo and to work passenger cruise ships during the strike. So what would happen in a one-week shutdown? It could lead to six-week recovery, is what they're saying. A strike would raise costs for shipping while also imposing lengthy delays. The top five ports in, in this negotiating group New York, New Jersey, Savannah, Georgia, Houston, Norfolk, and Charleston handled more than 1.5 million 20-foot equivalent units valued at $83.7 billion in August. About two-thirds of that cargo was inbound, while the remaining was outbound. Trade disruptions from a work stoppage will begin immediately, causing supply chain problems, and this is according to logistics experts. That's the warning that they gave out. So ex expect those supply chain problems pretty much on everything. So the analysts at Sea Intelligence, uh, a base shipping advisory firm, estimated that it would take anywhere from four to six days to clear the backlog from a one day strike. So basically this day we are backed up because nothing is moving. One of the largest providers of ocean transportation and the member of the employer group warned that a one week shutdown could require up to six weeks of recovery time. And delays compounding with each passing day. So I wanted to bring you guys this because this is definitely out of everything I bring you news that you can use. Please share this out. Leave your comments, your thoughts on this, um, why you think Biden decided he's not going to, you know, force the situation. <laughs> so I'll see y'all in the next video. If this was informative, please hit that like button. Um, y'all, it's early in the morning. It's like 6.29 and I'm doing this, but it had to be done. I had to give it to you. So I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care. Definitely hit the like, share it out and have a safe, blessed day.